Next on the iCarly, Sam and I are gonna show you one of the funniest guys on the web. Even funnier than the burping giraffe. His name is George. George. <laughs> is awesome! He makes these insanely hilarious videos that are sort of impossible to describe. So we'll shut up and you just watch. All right, people, we give you... George. Hi everyone, welcome back. So recently, the reboot of the Nickelodeon show iCarly has begun airing on Paramount+, Plus. executive produced by, among other people, Mr. Mosby. If you're a similar age to me, you might remember watching iCarly sometime in the late 2000s. It was a goofy and surprisingly well put together kids sitcom about a girl and her two friends who become internet celebrities after starting a weekly web show. iCarly came out at a really interesting time because YouTube was only a little over two years old when it first aired. And of course the setting and a lot of the themes in iCarly center around these ideas of internet stardom and online content creating, which was a Pandora's box that YouTube was only just opening. While modern social media and YouTubers and influencers are all things that people are typically quite familiar with now, iCarly came out at a point when nobody was sure what any of that really meant yet. And that's why it's all the more surprising that Nickelodeon not only greenlit a show based on these ideas, but that it actually managed to do a pretty good job of imagining the realities of new media. Now, I'm not saying that iCarly was realistic. Not at all. I mean, there's no way that Spencer would be able to afford an apartment like that in Seattle, first off. But it's interesting to see the parallels between what happened in iCarly and what happens today in some parts of YouTube. And with iCarly and YouTube both starting out at around the same time and being basically about the same thing, it only made sense that when the second season of iCarly finally rolled around, why not put a big YouTuber in an episode? How about the biggest YouTuber? And do you know who that was in 2009? I'll give you a hint. Okay, realistically, I didn't need to give you a hint. You've seen the title of the video. I just wanted an excuse to play that clip. But that's right. Fred, the show or the YouTube series or the whatever it was, based around the squeaky voice character Fred Figglehorn, was at the time the most popular thing on YouTube. And it just so happened that Fred was super popular with the same age group as the kids that were watching iCarly. And so, on February 16th, 2009, the 11th episode of the second season of iCarly aired entitled I Meet Fred. Red. And let me tell you, it's a bit weird. So the episode begins during another one of the weekly web shows. In this one, Carly and Sam are showcasing a really funny person they found on the internet, who just so happens to be Fred. And so they play the video Fred Goes Swimming, which back then was his most popular video on YouTube. At this point, I really thought they were just gonna play the entire Fred Goes Swimming video. It's really weird how they decide to lift one of his real YouTube videos to put in the episode, even though they just make a bunch of fake Fred content later on anyway. It sort of makes you wonder if the only reason Nickelodeon wanted to to make this episode was so that they could broadcast a bunch of Fred content without worrying about copyright infringement. Okay, next on iCarly, Sam and I were gonna shave some stuffed animals. Which is always a good time. <laughs> but now I'm thinking that instead we should watch another Fred video. Is iCarly the original React channel? They'll just stop doing content now and watch other people's videos instead. iCarly was really ahead of its time. Carly and Sam are really keen to watch another Fred video, but Freddy, that's this guy, not this guy, isn't so happy about it. You don't want to see another Fred video? Not really. Why not, fudge face? <laughs> because I don't think Fred is all that funny. Uh, do you know how popular his videos are? Yeah, Freddy, don't you know how popular his videos are? Everybody knows that the more views something gets, the more funny it is. That's why the news is hilarious. Also, if Fred is super popular, why would iCarly need to showcase his videos on their show? Surely all of their audience already knows about him. Or were they purely just trying to use his content for views? Is iCarly just some shady clickbait channel where they put red circles in the thumbnail and make videos about the 10 things you won't believe about Fred? But hey, Freddy not liking it isn't a big deal, and I'm sure it won't come back to hurt him later on. Right? Five minutes later. Hey, it's me. If you saw the last iCarly, then you heard Freddie Benson say he doesn't like my Fred videos. Because I don't think Fred is all that funny. Thank you for crushing my feelings. Now, I'm not going to post any more Fred videos. Ever. Again. Internet, I click you goodbye. Oh. Oh wait, so Fred announces that he's not gonna make videos anymore because Freddy hurt his feelings. Which is sort of surprising. You'd think that if Fred's videos are as popular as this episode wants us to believe, he'd be used to getting these sorts of comments. And in fact, what Freddy said is really quite tame compared to the sort of stuff that even I get on YouTube sometimes with 45 subscribers. But this announcement makes everybody at school and online hate Freddy and by extension Carly and Sam for killing Fred. The iCarly gang then start receiving a ton of hate for beefing with Fred. Also, there's this B-plot where Spencer has 
has a magic eight ball called the magic meatball that he uses to tell him what to do. This is also the episode with that one meme. Um, what you got there? It's a smoothie. I honestly forgot how good this show could be sometimes. The drama between iCarly and Fred keeps escalating. Someone makes a website telling people to stop watching iCarly, the paparazzi show up at Carly's door, Neville, who's a recurring villain from the show, covers the drama on his website, which I guess makes him the keen star of this universe. And then finally, Fred gets in contact with Carly and tells her, Sam, and Freddy to come and meet him in Idaho. Everybody shows up in Idaho and we get a look at Fred's treehouse, which is the place where he makes all his videos from. Like most Nick Nickelodeon and Disney Channel shows, iCarly suffers from something that I spoke about in my Spy Kids video, which is called Beautiful Home Syndrome. This is where all the homes and the hangout places in the show are way, way too well decorated to be somewhere that anyone could realistically afford. I don't know what Nickelodeon thinks YouTubers are supposed to do, but I really need to step up my game. But it's kind of fun anyway to look around all the different stuff these sets were decorated with. Like Fred has an editing bay where he seems to still be editing Fred Goes Swimming, even though they already showed that video earlier in the episode, so I guess this is like the director's cut. Or maybe he just plays it on loop. Maybe that's why his videos have like a billion views. So the iCarly gang let themselves into the treehouse, and then finally Fred makes an appearance and he and Freddy have a heart to heart. <laughs> Hello. Why did the writers make Fred so creepy in this episode? Also unrelated, but why does he have a storyboard in the background? I refuse to believe that Fred Goes Swimming went through any sort of storyboarding process. Freddy apologises to Fred for hurting his feelings, but still refuses to say that he thinks his videos are funny. Which, after all the trouble that this caused, wouldn't you just back down and at least pretend you thought the videos were funny? I mean, come on, Freddy, play along. But then Sam beats the shit out of him and that changes his mind. And I guess Fred just doesn't see a problem with that. But then Fred reveals that he actually didn't care about the drama that he started because he only did it to make his videos more popular. Guys, since this war between iCarly and me started, do you realize that my Fred videos have gotten like 10 times more popular than they already were? Oh, I understand now. Fred's an asshole. He just started fake beef with another creator to get more views, and it worked. And the funny thing is that's basically how it works on YouTube now. Just look at what happens whenever Jake or Logan Paul goes after someone. Everyone involved gets way more popular. Again, iCarly, ahead of its time. And of course, Fred didn't just do it for the sake of his own videos, but also for iCarly too. What are you talking about? When was the last time you guys checked your website ratings? Uh, I don't know, like a few weeks ago? Well, check them now. See? Web traffic to iCarly.com is higher than it's ever been. Where are the numbers on that graph? That could just be iCarly going from one viewer to like, three? In fact, how many people actually do watch iCarly? What sort of numbers are we talking here? Does everyone on the planet watch iCarly? Does she get mobbed whenever she leaves the house? How come so many paparazzi showed up at her house if it's never happened before? I have so many questions about this universe. But anyway, Fred and iCarly resolve their issues. Everything's cool again, and Fred continues to be really creepy. So, are we friends? I guess. You sure? Sure. <laughs> Should we kiss? No. <laughs> Just your typical big YouTuber. And then he guest stars on iCarly. Kind of like how the real Fred is guest starring on this episode of iCarly. And I think he misses this high five and they just didn't do another take. The episode ends with this Fred style video. It's mostly just all the characters spouting typical late 2000s random equals funny humor. I think when I was 10, I probably found this part really funny, but now it's just too much. Sam makes a Beatles reference, which I think went over everyone's heads in 2009. Hi! I like how all the outside sequences of this part clearly took place in the car park of the studio where they filmed iCarly. It's kind of like they blew all their budget on Fred's treehouse and this was all they could afford for the end of the episode. But that's the end of I Meet Fred. This episode was released around the time I first started using YouTube, and I remember finding out about it online and being super excited to watch it, because I watched Fred and 10 year old me really enjoyed those videos. Nickelodeon also promoted it super heavily. They made special promos talking about how YouTube sensation Fred was going to be an iCarly 
finale and you could not miss it. But when this finally aired, I was pretty disappointed. Fred is barely in the episode. I get that Lucas Cruikshank wasn't a trained actor like the rest of the cast at the time and so was probably pretty limited in what the studio wanted him to do, but I feel like the writers merely shoehorned him into whatever story they thought would fit rather than actually trying to make a good episode around him. Looking back on this now, it's not very good or very funny. The best part of it is Spencer, but they don't really resolve his B story, it just sort of fizzles out halfway through. I know I shouldn't exactly expect Nickelodeon sitcoms to be masterpieces, but the writing in this one feels particularly lazy. It's entirely centered around this big conflict between iCarly and Fred, but there isn't actually much of a conflict at all. Even back then, I knew that Freddy saying he didn't think Fred was funny just isn't a big deal. With all that being said, I still think it's really cool that this happened. Think about it. A YouTuber guest starred on a popular TV show in 2009. Even nowadays, YouTube still struggles to be taken seriously by the old media world of film and television, and back in 2009 that was even more the case. While it may seem laughable to regard Fred appearing on iCarly as a now they will take me seriously moment, to some extent it was. This episode is a really early example of someone from that dumb video website breaking into another form of entertainment, and I think it deserves some recognition for that. Now, I'm not saying that this episode is the reason why we have Jimmy Fallon playing Among Us, or Ninja doing Fortnite dances on New Year's Eve, but anyway, that's my look back at that one time that Fred was on iCarly. It was pretty fun to rewatch this episode and see it from a modern perspective. I think now we're a little bit desensitized to seeing YouTubers on TV, but back then it really did feel like worlds colliding. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing. If there's another strange TV episode or anything else for that matter that you'd like me to cover next, let me know, and I'll see you next time.